Namaste. In continuation of my talk on the ore deposits related to chemical sedimentation, today we shall understand the geologic features of strata bound deposits. The term strata bound is applied irrespective of their mineralogy to those deposits which are restricted to a fairly limited stratigraphical range within the strata of a particular region. For example, the vein, flat and pipe lead zinc fluoride barite deposits of the Pennine ore fields of Britain are restricted to the lower carboniferous and therefore spoken of as being strata bound. To take a very different example, the stratiform deposits of the Zambian copper belt are all developed at about the same stratigraphical horizon in the Proterozoic Rohan series and these two may be described as strata bound. Clearly, stratiform deposits can be strata bound, but strata bound ores are not necessarily stratiform. This lesson deals with two important associations of strata bound deposits. Number one, carbonate hosted base metal deposits and number two, sandstone, uranium, vanadium base metal deposits. The first one is carbonate hosted base metal deposits. These deposits are important producers of lead and zinc and also sometimes principally of fluorite and barite. Copper is important in some fields, notably that of Central Ireland. With regard to the distribution in space and time, most of the lead and zinc produced in Europe and the USA comes from this type of deposit. In Europe, there are important fields in Central Ireland, the Alps, Southern Poland and the Pennies of England. In the USA, there are the Appalachian Zinc Belt through Tennis and Virginia, Mississippi Valley area, centered around Tri-State, that is Southwest Missouri, Northeast Oklahoma, and Southeast Kansas, and extending into Wisconsin, Southeast Missouri, and Upper Mississippi districts. These are all so important fields in North Africa, in places like Tunisia and Algeria, as well as in Canada. Substantial deposits belonging to this category from Cambrian to Cretaceous bearing the Silurian or Southeast Missouri, Edicara, South Australia, Sardina, Spain deposits belonging to Cambrian, Upper Mississippi deposits of Ordovician, Pine Point, Northwestern Territories, Canada, Lenard Shelf Area, Western Australia deposits belonging to Devonian period, Central Ireland deposits, British Pennies deposits, Tri-State deposits of USA, Illinois, Kentucky of USA deposits belong to Carboniferous, Tento Valley, Italy deposits of Permian, Eastern Alf deposits of Triassic, Eastern Poland deposits of Jurassic, Northern Algeria and Tunisia deposits of Cretaceous. Regarding environment of formation, the carbonate hosted base metal deposits are encountered mainly in dolomites and to a lesser extent in limestone. The fauna and lithologies of limestone and dolomite hosts show that they were mostly found in shallow water near shore environments of warm seas peripheral to intracratonic basins. Some ore deposits, example, Nanisvisic, Canada, and the Eastern Alpine District, straddling Australia, Italy, and Yugoslavia, occur in former rift zones. The warmer climates of low latitudes encourage the development of reefs, and so the frequent but by no means universal association of these deposits with reefs and carbonate mud banks is not surprising. The occurrence of reefs and carbonate mud banks is related to ancient shorelines and seabed topographies. The isotopic composition of the sulfur and sulfides from a number of carbonate hosted deposits suggests origination from seawater sulfate, particularly seawater of the same age as the limestone country rocks. Sulfate evaporates are known to be interbedded with the limestones in relatively 
close regional proximity to many carbonate hosted base metal deposits, thus indicating paleogeographical control. Three environments for localization of carbonate hosted base metal deposits are known. Number one, along the margins of marine basins that formed in stable cratonic areas. Number two, in the field arms of the triple junctions of rifted continental areas. And number three, on the flanks of embryonic oceans. In the cratonic basin shelf sea environment, the ore fields are present in positive areas of shallow water sedimentation and separated from each other by shale rich basins. Such positive areas in the British Isles are often underlined by fractured older granitic mosses. The latter can provide channel ways for uprising hydrothermal solutions which on reaching the overlying limestones give rise to the mineralization. In addition, a large number of deposits are clearly related spatially to faults up which the ore solutions may have passed. Coming to the classification of ore deposits, carbonate hosted strata bound base metal deposits are classified into three types. Mississippi type, Irish type and Alpine or Appalachian type. Ashok Mukherjee in the year 1999 has provided the following salient features pertaining to these three types of base metal deposits. Mississippi Valley type carbonate hosted base metal deposits include all low temperature deposits containing one or more of the minerals barite, fluorite, galena, spalrite that are epigenetic in origin. These deposits occur principally in unfolded limestone or dolestone, unconfirmably overlying, highly deformed and metamorphosed basement. The host rocks with brittle fractures, domes and gentle wrappings register evidence of mild deformation. Ore districts are devoid of post-sedimentation igneous activity bearing in the Kentucky Illinois district. Ore occurrences are in carbonate host rocks that are basement knobs, in facies controlled reef back reef regions with vertical fault controlled collapse structures and penny concordant pseudobrachia under an unconformity or disconformity. In pitches and flats as low grade disseminations in paleocarst works etc. The host rocks exhibit ubiquitous brexiation, dissolution, recrystallization and dolomatization. The deposits tend to be rich in zinc and extremely poor in copper. Fluids in fluid inclusions in spalrite, fluorite, barite and calcite are found to be highly saline, dense with temperature range 50 to 200 degrees centigrade. In fluids of the fluid inclusions, oil and or methane is often present. These features of the fluid inclusions are strikingly similar to those of pore fluids in present day sedimentary basins. Leads from the various fields of Mississippi Valley have been found to be notably enriched in radiogenic lead compared to ordinary lead. This fact suggests that the Mississippi Valley lead was derived from a crustal source relatively high in uranium and thorium which could have provided it with anomalous amounts of radiogenic lead. A highly probable source of this nature would be the Precambrian basement. In ores, presence of three generations of spalrite, each with characteristic color, fluid homogenization, Temperature and fluid composition are reported during overall deposition of ores. Spalrite is found to be involved in repeated dissolution and precipitation. Delta S34 values of sulfides are distinctive in each ore district and these data include a non-magmatic source for the ores. Irish type carbonate hosted base metal deposits occur in thick sequence of banded limestone with interfingering reef facies and overlined by and laterally grading into dark massive limestone and underlined by red beds. Almost all major deposits are located in immediate vicinity of faults from which ore bodies extend 
concordantly into bedded carbonates. This indicates a first order structural control and subsidiary stratigraphic or lithologic control. The ores do not exhibit evidences of post lithification emplacement and permeability control and these features indicate syn sedimentary timing of mineralization. Ores are essentially made up of pyrite, spalrite, galena and minor chalcopyrite and tenatite. Barite is often found. Fluid inclusions from quartz and spalrite indicate temperature up to 240 degrees centigrade. Olfine type carbonate hosted base metal deposits occur principally in folded limestone dolomite with interbedded shales and sandstone and lateral facies variation into black shales and cherts characteristic of orogenic belt tectonic setting. Ores occur as penniconcordant lances and sheets. Ores exhibit fine banding and soft sedimentation deformation structures and textures. They occur along course beneath unconformity as disseminations, work fillings, discordant bodies along faults, short unconformable veins. They also occur as uh, large replacement bodies which are considered as of diagenetic origin. Ores exhibit wide variation in lead to zinc ratio. Some ores are silver rich with abundant pyrite plus or minus bitumen. Ores contain dominantly ordinary lead which indicates either a uniform deep seated source or the normal lead carried by a basinal brine. Russell and Shaku in the year 1991 based on the enthalpy involved in the mineralizing systems have provided the following genetic aspects of the three types of carbonate hosted base metal deposits. Number one, a low enthalpy or Mississippi type deposits were formed from an evolved basinal brine which has been forced towards a basin margin by compaction and a hydraulically controlled head of water. Number two, a medium enthalpy or Irish type deposits were generated by modified saline seawater convected within the upper crust. And number three, a high enthalpy or alpine de deposits in which the mineralizing fluids were derived from basinal brine which was augmented by meteoric water that was circulating in convection cells driven by a nearly magmatic intrusion. In this type of deposits, development of fluoride is attributed to magmatic fluorine source. Now let us understand the ore body types and their situations. The ore bodies of carbonate hosted mass metal deposits are very variable in type. In the British pennies, vein ore bodies with ribbon ore shoots occupying normal folds are the main deposit type in the northern field. In the southern pennies, veins are again the most important ore bodies but they occupy wrench folds. The ore bodies in the tri-state area in USA are in solution and collapse structures, caves and underground channel ways connected with coarse topography and these are common features in many ore districts. Solution collapse breccias host many ore bodies. At Pine Point, the ores are in interconnected small scale solution cavities. They may be listed as follows. Number one, above unconformities in environment such as permeable reefs and facies changes, supertenuous folds, above the pinch outs of permeable channel V horizons, above or in mud bank complexes. Number two, below unconformities in solution formed open spaces related to a cost topography predating the unconformity or in collapse structures formed by the dissolution of underlying beds by subsurface drainage. Number three, at a facies change in a formation or between basins of deposition. Number four, in regional fracture systems. Coming to grade, tonnage and mineralogy of carbonate hosted base metal deposits, average ore grades range mainly from 3 to 15 percent combined lead and zinc with individual ore bodies running up to 50 percent. 
Tonnage generally range from a few tens of thousands up to million tons. Lead and or zinc are the elements that commonly determine economic viability. In a few mines, silver and copper are important byproducts as are cadmium and germanium. Fluoride and or barite may be important byproducts or the prime products that are mined. Majority of Mississippi Valley type deposits are less than 10 million tons in size, but ore fields totals made up of a number of deposits often lie in the range of 50 to 500 million tons. Example, Pine Point with over 8 separate bodies and the Upper Mississippi Valley with nearly 300 deposits. Most Mississippi Valley type ore fields have a high zinc to lead ratio and a few produce very little or no lead. Lead dominated fields are rare and limited largely to the very productive old new lead belts of Southeast Missouri district. The characteristic minerals of this ore association are galena, spalerite, fluorite and barite in different ratios to one another varying from field to field. Pyrite and especially marcasite may be common and chalcopyrite is important in a few deposits. Calcite, dolomite and other carbonates and various forms of silica usually constitute the main gang material. Coliform textures are common in some ores, otherwise these are commonly but not invariably coarse grind. Lastly, the origin of carbonate hosted base metal deposits. Majority of deposits of this class have been formed from epigenetic hydrothermal solutions. The source or sources of these solutions and their metallic constituents is very problematical. The work of Molar in the year 1985 indicates temperatures of below 270 degrees centigrade for the source regions of these fluids. In that case, the fluids must be either formation water or heated circulating surface water. The source of sulfur may have been partially deep seated or from marine evaporates or from seawater. There are four general models for the genesis of carbonate hosted lead zinc deposits. Number one, transport of the metals as bisulfide complexes, one fluid carrying metals and sulfur with precipitation by boiling, cooling by contact with groundwater, etc. Number two, more favored hypothesis is the transport of metals as chloride complexes and precipitation when the solution meets one carrying H2S known by the name a mixing model. Number three, transport of metals as chloride complexes and sulfur as sulfate in the same solution, precipitation when sulfate is reduced by encountering organic material. And number four, organometallic complexes as carriers of the metals H2S in the same solution with precipitation by cooling. The second important type of strata bound deposit is the sandstone uranium vanadium base metal deposits. These deposits are found in terrestrial sediments, frequently fluviatile, which were generally laid down under arid conditions. As a result, the host rocks are often red in color and for this reason, copper deposits of this type are commonly referred to as red bed coppers. Examples are the sandstone hosted copper deposits in Urals, Russia, Nova Scotia, Germany, New Mexico and southwestern USA, China. Sandstone hosted lead deposits are known in Germany. Sandstone hosted silver deposits are encountered in Utah, USA. Sandstone hosted uranium deposits are called by many names such as Colorado Plateau type, Carnotite type. Wyoming roll front type, Wyoming geochemical cell uranium type, western states type or sandstone uranium type. The last term is now in common use. In deposits of this type, one or two metals are present in economic amounts, whilst the others may be present in minor or trace quantities. 
Thus, copper mineralization with chalcosite, boronite, and covalite is widespread in red bed succession, though it is not often up to ore grade, and same applies to silver and lead zinc mineralization. Uranium mineralization with or without vanadium may be accompanied by trace amounts of the above metals but usually occurs as separately deposits. Chalcoside bearing copper deposits have a high metal to sulfur ratio. These deposits yield a copper concentrate low in sulfur which is very acceptable to person day custom smelters faced with stringent anti-pollution legislation. The subtype of sandstone uranium vanadium base metal deposits is sandstone uranium type deposits. Uranium deposits of this general type are widespread in the Colorado Plateau region and in Wyoming and they have provided over 95% of USA domestic production of uranium and vanadium. Metals occurring in these deposits is in significant quantities are uranium, vanadium, copper, silver, selenium and molybdenum. Generally grades vary from 0.1 to 1% U3O8 but locally can be much higher with such phenomena as whole tree trunks entirely replaced by uranium minerals. Some American deposits carry up to 1.5% V2O5 and some up to 0.2% molybdenum. Most of the ore bodies of the sandstone hosted uranium deposits are similar. The larger deposits form uh, mantles hundreds of meters long, about 100 meters wide and a few meters thick. In several deposits, ore bodies are elongated and follow buried stream courses or lenses of conglomeratic material. The most common forms of deposits are termed number one, roll front, number two, blanket or penny concordant, and number three, stack or tectolithological, which are often related to permeable fault zones. These different morphologies can be related to the flow of mineralizing fluids through the host rocks. The deposits are epigenetic in the sense that they were formed in their present position, often host sediment was deposited. Ore minerals are accommodated in pore spaces where they form thin coatings on the detrital grains, whilst in the case of high grade deposits, they may entirely fill the pore spaces. The disseminated form and microscopic size of the ore minerals increase the susceptibility to subsequent oxidation and remobilization by both alteration and weathering. The principal primary uranium minerals are pitchplant and coffinite. Vanadium, if present, is generally in the form of rescoelite, that is vanadium, mica, and montrosite. Sedimentological studies have shown that the usual immediate host rocks of these ores are fossil stream channel deposits. These consist of linear formations of permeable sandstones and conglomeratic sandstone enclosed by relatively impermeable rocks such as shields, mudstones, etc. During deposition, climatic conditions were warm to hot and seasonably humid. Abundant vegetation grew in the depositional area and animals burrowed and mixed dead vegetation with the sediment. Frequent reworking by the streams incorporated sufficient organic material into the sediment to produce reducing conditions when it decayed. The sands deposited under these conditions were organic rich, pyritic and the associated clays were pyritic and commonly carbonaceous. Sediments were often derived from a granitic source area and during weathering of the granite, its trace content of uranium would be oxidized to the hexavalent state and taken into solution. Thus, uranium would migrate through the basin of the deposition to be lost to the sea unless it came into contact with reducing conditions in the organic rich sediment a short distance beneath the sediment water interface, in which case it would enrich the sediment. 
In some areas, acid tufts rather than granites appear to have been the source rock for the uranium and the devitrification of tufaceous sediments may well be the major source of the uranium in the U.S. deposits. As the oxygen-rich waters encroached upon the reducing environment, an irregular tongue-shaped zone of oxidized rock was formed. The interface or redox boundary between the oxidized and reduced rocks has, in cross-section, the shape of a crudely crescentric envelope or roll, the leading edge of which cuts across the strata and points down deep towards reduced ground that still contains autogenic iron disulfides. The reduced ground is generally gray in color, the oxidized ground is drab yellow to orange, red or red owing to the development of limonite and hematite by alteration of the sulfides. Upon encountering reduced conditions, the uranium became reduced to the insoluble tetravalent state and was precipitated. Continuous or episodic introduction of oxygenated groundwater resulted in continuous or episodic solution and redeposition of uranium and migration of the redox interface down the paleoslope. This process can lead to ore grade accumulation at or near the conclave edge of the rule and to a lesser extent in reduced rock near the upper and lower limits of the rule. Later reduction or oxidation of the ore beds may materially alter the form and mineralogy of the ore bodies and obscure the primary redox conditions. Fluid inclusion studies carried out on calcite and barite associated with uranium ores of roll front indicate low temperature of their formation. To recapitulate what we learned today, carbonate hosted strata bound base metal deposits are important producers of lead and zinc and are formed essentially from epigenetic hydrothermal solutions. Number two, carbonate hosted base metal deposits are classified into three types based on their genetic signatures. Number one, Mississippi Valley type formed from an evolved basinal brine which has been forced towards a basin margin by compaction and a hydraulically controlled head of water. B. Hyrish type generated by modified saline seawater convected within the upper crust. C. Alpine type in which the mineralizing fluid is basinal brine augmented by meteoric water that was circulating in convection cells driven by a nearby magmatic intrusion. Number three, sandstone uranium type deposits provide any one or more of the following metals. Uranium, vanadium, copper, silver, selenium, and molybdenum. Number four, the deposits uranium, vanadium, copper, silver, selenium, and molybdenum are epigenetic in the sense that they were formed in their, pre in their present position after host sediment was deposited. Number four, the most common forms of sandstone uranium type deposits are termed roll front, blanket or penny concordant and stack or tectolithological, the latter is often related to permeable fault zones. Number five, weathered uranium bearing granites and devitrified acidic tufts are the source material for the sandstone hosted uranium and vanadium mineralization. Immediate host rocks of these ores are organic rich fossil stream channel deposits. The organic rich stream channel sediments under reduced conditions were responsible for precipitation of uranium derived from source area of weathered granites containing trace amounts of uranium.